Uh, yeah, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, this session is basically do voter onboarding for retro PGF. Um, uh, so first thing I want to do is just make sure everyone can see what I'm saying. Is my screen up, Zach? Yeah, looks like it's all good. Ramirez, give me a thumbs up. Great. Um, cool. Well, um, yeah, things have started really well with uh, with Retro Pockets Goods funding. Um, I think we had about fifty submissions in total, which is um, which is a fantastic response, and I think a good reminder of um, yeah, what a thriving community we have. We uh, may be small, um, but I think we're quite mighty, which is um, which is very cool to see and, and get that feedback again. Um, uh, and now um, we're doing an assessment. Um, just to make sure that all of the submissions meet our eligibility criteria. And then uh, perhaps the most important, um, certainly one of the more complex elements, um, uh, is the voting process. And yeah, today is really about taking you guys through what the voting process looks like, how the mechanisms work, that sort of thing. Um, so just to set the scene, um, yeah, we're going to talk about sort of the current status of retro pocket goods. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the rules that are involved um, and the role of voters, which I think is why sort of everyone's here today. Um, we're going to talk about impact and assessment, um, which are the two sort of key things voters need to be doing. Um, and then my dad's going to give us um, a demo of the voting flow and the voting mechanism, um, which I think are really cool, particularly the voting mechanism. It's it's something we're experimenting with in our funding round as compared to some of the other funding rounds out there. Um, so it'd be good for people to see that today and get some feedback. And then at the end, we'll, we'll sort of answer, do a bit of a Q&A. Um, I'm going to rely on Zach to sort of share any questions as they come up during the call. So Zach, stop me if there's things that you're not able to answer in the chat itself. Um, and yeah, very happy for this to be a participatory process. So if anyone sort of wants to speak up, just shout your questions at me. Um, yeah, I'm happy to answer them in real time too. Um, cool. All right, well, let's get into it. Um, where are we at? So yeah, the first phase is sort of this submission process. As I said, we got about 50 submissions. Most of them are from unique uh, projects or contributors. I think there's only maybe three or four um, teams with multiple submissions. So um, yeah, it's it's absolutely great. We've got submissions in all of the categories. Um, you might recall we have a protocol category, we have an ecosystem category and an adoption category. So I think it is somewhat representative of our one. Our ecosystem at large, which is um, which is fantastic too, to see that everyone's sort of um, participating in that. Um, this week, uh, we're doing an assessment of eligibility and conflicts. Um, eligibility, just to make sure that people have made contributions to Pocket, um, that they've made those contributions through the, the window in which we're um, retroactively rewarding people. Um, and yeah, that they followed all of the rules that are sort of in place around um, providing the information that's needed for uh, for it to be a valid submission. Um, we're also just capturing conflicts. Um, there was a question in the submission um, whether people are um, uh, directly um, or their employees or members of their project team um, actually DAO voters. Um, this is something that's a little bit different than other rounds that have been out there, but. Uh, what we really need to do is make sure that people disclose any potential conflicts when it comes to voting. Um, and then once they're disclosed, that, that they don't act on them. Um, people can't actually vote for themselves, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, so we'll have all of that done this week. And then from next Monday, um, voting opens up. We have a two-week voting window for people to get their votes in um, with 50 submissions. It, it's probably something that's going to take a little bit of time, um, even though we've tried to design a simple mechanism um, you know, to really objectively uh, assess everything that's in there. Um, yeah, probably going to take a couple of hours. So 
want to have a nice long window of two weeks for people to actually complete that. And then when it's all said and done, um, we'll share the tally, uh, present the results, um, and then the rewards will start to stream out to people from there. Um, so that's uh, that's where we're at. Um, as we move into voting, I think probably a really important thing to share at this point is our rules of conduct. Um, I don't intend to go through all of them. There's two things in particular that I just want to call out. Um, the first is that it is very, very important that you are familiar with the rules of conduct, particularly as it relates to those conflicts. We have a conflict committee in place, which represents PNF, the broader community, and an external third party. Um, and essentially their role is to make sure that no one is voting for their own projects. Um, uh, can actually be disqualified, and that means rewards won't be available. Um, so really, really important thing we want to make sure that um, our voters understand is that if you have a submission, um, do not <laughs> vote for your own submission. That would be really, really bad. Um, the other thing just to call out from the rules of conduct is that you cannot canvas votes. You cannot call other projects and ask them to vote for you. You can't advertise your submission saying, hey, please vote for us. Um, essentially, what we need is for the voters to assess the evidence and make their own decision based on what's been presented to them. Um, this is, you know, maybe a little bit scary as it's written out there. That's not the intent at all. Um, it's really just to make sure that we have um, a, a really fair and open process that, um, you know, is as credibly neutral as possible. Um, it's great that we have our DAO voters participating, um, but given many of them also have submissions, it's just really important that we um, we set a high standard around um, around this part of the process. If you've got any questions, we've also opened up a retro PGF channel in Discord where you can reach us anytime. So um, yeah, we're happy to answer questions as we go along or in the Q&A, but if things come up later, you can also reach us in that Discord channel. Cool. Uh, I then, have a question. Yeah, jump in, Ramon. Um, how, how do we disclose the the borders? Because there was an option like a checkbox and I clicked it, but it never asked for any address of the voters associated with the project or anything like that. We're following up with all of those that have disclosed now. So st step one was to get the disclosures. I think we uh, maybe observed a couple of people might have might have not fully realized what that question was. So we're just making sure that they're all disclosed. Um, and then, yeah, actually, actually getting the details around those disclosures is something that we'll be following up on in the next couple of days. So. Um, We've already sent out an email today just about the process, um, but yeah, we'll follow up again in the next probably 48 hours to uh, to make sure we capture all of that. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do the final assessment around the conflicts once uh, once voting closes. Good question, thank you. Great, so yeah, the role of voters, let's, let's sort of talk about that. I think there's three, elements to this um you know the whole point of submissions was to get you the voters as much information as possible to sort of make um, make really good decisions so the first part of the voting process is for you to review the submissions um within that there's the contributions themselves which would set out the nature of um what the contributions been um there's the impact metrics yeah, which is really the evidence of impact. And this is really critically important that we focus on that evidence of impact, not what the contribution says the impact might have been. Um, ultimately, it's about data and showing that, hey, we have driven activity, we've driven uh, commits to the repos, we've driven new people to adopt Pocket. Um, and that we use that as, as sort of the core of our evidence. Um, the other element to sort of assess is the grants and funding, which I'll get to in the next section. And then finally, there's a discussion and feedback session section. Um, at the moment, that section is open to 
anyone in the community to sort of leave feedback or questions um, or I guess endorsements around the contributions, um, which the voters can then actually um, see as they're doing their submission review. At the end of this week on Friday, we'll close that to the general public um, and then it will become private and will be available only to voters. Um, and what voters will be able to do is to provide their own questions, their own reasoning for their assessments, to help build context for other voters um, and to ensure that, that voters have sort of a mechanism to engage with each other through the process to make sure that they're capturing all of the information that they think is going to be important for them to um, to make their assessment. So, um, yeah, the combination of those four things, we hope, gives voters some really good information to decide, hey, what, what have been the most impactful contributions and, and what does that look like across our, across our ecosystem? So after the review, we need to assess impact. Um, and it's a little bit tricky to sort of describe this, but, but what we're trying to do in this process is to create a connection between the funding or the rewards received and the impact generated. Okay, um, so what this means and, and the reason that we have a retroactive funding round is because um, often the funding that is provided does not match the impact that's created. Yeah, retroactive funding is great because it gives us more time to really assess that impact, uh, not the promise of impact, but the actual impact. And then this retroactive funding round aims to close that gap between the impact created and the, the funding or rewards received. So your the job is actually to assess that extra impact. It's not just what has been the most impactful contributions because somebody with a million dollars can, can probably make more impactful contributions than somebody that has $10,000. Um, what we're trying to do here is, is to just reduce that gap by rewarding the extra impact. And that's the assessment we're asking voters to make when they come to vote. And then the third step of this process is to assign uh, the submissions or the projects to one of four impact tiers, highest impact, high impact, medium impact, or low impact. Um, and the reason that we're doing this is actually in other retroactive funding rounds, the voters have sort of been given a somewhat impossible task where they not only have to assess the impact, but they have to sort of be able to uh, be able to price that impact, which is an incredibly difficult and and I would say incredibly subjective thing. Um, you may know that something is like, you know, high impact or really influential. But whether that's $10,000 or $50,000 or $100,000, actually that, that is often a really, really difficult challenge to overcome. So um, the way that our voting mechanism has been designed is that voters can assign projects to one of these impact tiers. And we have an algorithm working in the background which um, will essentially decide on a distribution of the reward funds to um, to the projects at the end, um, hopefully simplifying the submission, uh, the review uh, process for voters um, and leading to a simple or a much simpler voting process. Um, I don't think I've done a great job of describing that, but I think it'll make a lot more sense when um, uh, when my dad does the demo shortly and, and hopefully you'll see that it's it's a pretty simple and pretty intuitive method that we've um, we've created. So that's the role of voters. Um, simplest part is, yeah, review submissions. Yep. Think about the level of impact and then assign that impact to one of four tiers. Um, and off we go. Cool. The last part of the assessment is we're actually providing a rubric as well, which I think provides, you know, a um, more objective way of thinking about how to assess each of these projects. 
you'll have all of that information. Um, what this is really giving you is a way to think about how to distinguish different levels of impact from, you know, what are going to be pretty diverse projects that you're assessing. It's not like comparing apples and apples. Um, yeah, it's apples and oranges, pears, bananas, etc. cetera. Um, but ultimately what we're trying to do here is just give you another mental model for thinking about how to assign things to the impact here. And a score of five in these dimensions is generally, you know, the maximum type of impact or evidence that can be provided. And when something's really at that maximum, when it's the absolute top tier, um, that would be something you'd assign to the highest impact tier. Um, as you sort of go down the scale, I think it's pretty clear to see um, where the different scores might align with the other tiers that we have in the voting. Um, but this is a good part because one, uh, you get to stop listening to my voice for a few minutes, but but two, actually get to see yeah the the system in action, um, which I think will uh, uh, make it really vivid around yeah how. Um, how the experience is going to look in the platform um, and what it's like when you come to uh, to finalise your vote. So, Murdad, um, you ready for me to pass over to you? Sure. Thank you. Uh, great presentation so far. If I can share my screen. Um, do you have my screen? We do. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. So. Uh, as a voter, uh, you are basically going to start your journey from our homepage. And uh, the way you need to interact with the system is to connect your whitelisted wallet. Uh, you can easily do this by connecting to your MetaMask. And switching to Optimism Network. Uh, when you do that, uh, you will see this button appear for you, which is View Ballot. Uh, by clicking on it, you are you can navigate to the ballot page where you can see our voting mechanism. Over here, there are different sections that you need to pay attention to. The first one is just a information section for you to uh, read and make sure that you read uh, the code of conduct. As Ben mentioned, it is really important that uh, voters do not vote for their own project. All of the information is captured here. You can just click on learn more and uh, understand the details better. The next section is our uh, eligibility criteria for submitting your ballot. So the way that our voting mechanism works is that you have to assign 10% of the projects that you want to put in your ballot in the highest tier, 20% in the second highest, uh, in high, 30% uh, in medium, and 40% in low. And you are able to also use the capacity from a higher tier in lower tiers. For example, you can use 30% of your ballot in high, 30% in medium, and 30% in low. Now, the way that the system is designed, it helps you to actually do this. You don't need to calculate and constantly think how many projects you need to add in order to uh, satisfy all of these requirements. So, for example, if I drag and drop a project in high impact, we instantly create empty places for you that shows you need to add one more project, for example, to medium and two more projects into low. And by adding these adding projects over here, you will see that uh, the error will disappear and uh, you're one step closer to submitting your ballot. And uh, as mentioned, you can also um, add a project that you can add to a higher tier to a lower tier, and it will satisfy the requirements. As you are working with this ballot, uh, these uh, eligibility criteria uh, will uh, become red and green, which indicates that you are either satisfying or not satisfying them. It is important that you know you can add as, as little projects as one project 
to your pilot, which is the bare minimum, or add as many projects as all of the projects that we have. And uh, there is no limitation on how many projects you need to put in. The only limitation is on the ratio of the projects that you put in. This is to ensure that uh, not all of you don't, uh, voters don't put all of the projects in highest tiers or all of the projects don't go to low tiers. Uh, moving on from this section, there is another flow where you can interact with the projects and it is the projects page. So in the project page, sorry, uh, you can, yeah, go ahead. Can I make a question about the, the other page? The... Sure, go ahead. Uh, if I want to vote for a single project in the highest impact category, I can't, or is it possible? <laughs> No, no, you cannot vote for a single project in highest category, and that is actually by design. So if you are voting for a project mm -hmm. in highest, it is required that you add other projects to your ballot in the lower tiers. This I is to ensure that... Of... Yeah. I can add a lot of lower impact just to allow, for example, it will be like nine more in the lowest tier. Uh, yes, correct. You can add uh, a lot of projects in the lower impact section um, and just put one project at the top. It is really up to you because, as as I said, you can use the unused capacity of higher tiers in a lower tier. Great. Thanks. I think, yeah. And, and, and just on this, I, I think I think um, it's important to, to just... Um, uh, maybe touch on on two elements of um uh the reasoning behind this the the first is um you know the highest impact here is is really reserved for the top of the top yeah um actually once you take the highest tier and the high impact here if you were to move it down my dad from highest to high actually it the requirements drop significantly because actually it only needs to be one of four projects at that point rather than one of 10. So essentially what we're driving to here is a distribution where only the absolute highest receive the, the high and we get a, a better distribution of rewards across all of the, the projects that should be rewarded. Um, the other reason that we um, have this mechanism um, is to avoid lazy voting. Um, it really doesn't help us as an ecosystem to uh, have people just choose the one or two that they know or care about. And what we're trying to do is recognise all of the wonderful types of impact that people create um, so that people not only rewarded for that impact, um, but we send a signal out to the world around all the different ways that you can create and be rewarded for value in uh, in pocket. So. Um, that's the nature of it. And then, yeah, again, um, the final reason why we have the impact is, is is just for simplicity. We're not asking people to decide whether highest impact is, like I said, 10,000 or 50,000 or 100,000. Um, what we're doing is just really sending that signal that these were the highest ones and the algorithm will, will um, uh, create the right distribution of, of most funding going to the people that are in those highest tiers. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this is the way that the ballot page works. Before I move on to the next flow, uh, you can also see the details of each project by clicking on the link next to it and read all of its information. Now, moving on to the second flow that you can interact with the projects and the ballots is through the projects page. Over here, we have a list of projects where you can search or sort them based on uh, uh, different criteria and start reading up on each of the projects. For example, if I go in this one project, uh, you can see all of the information, their impact metrics and details and description. And once you are done with uh, assessing the project, you have two options. Either 
managing the project directly from here on your ballot by clicking on this button down here or the button that is up here. Uh, doing so will show you the project that you are in and your ballot where you can move around previous projects and add your new project or even remove a project if you need to. And uh, if you need to access other projects, you can simply remove the name from here and see the list of other projects. Uh, once you are done, you can just close this. Everything that you do over here will be saved for you so you can manage it later on in the ballot page. And once you are done, you can move on to the next page or to the next project and start reading up on that one. Uh, and uh, this is the flow for adding a project quickly to your ballot. Once you are done and uh, you read up all of all of the projects, you did your assessment and uh, you are comfortable with your ballot, um, you can submit it. Uh, this is so once you are done, all of these uh, criteria will be green and you will have access to submit ballot where you attest your ballot and it will be saved on chain. Uh, it is not possible for you to change your ballot, but uh, if you have to change, you are able to revoke your ballot and attest a new one. Uh, these are the two flows that our voters can interact with the voting system. And uh, there is a scoreboard where you can see all of the projects. Uh, this is just a screenshot. I can't demo it because we don't have the uh, scoreboard right now with all the projects. But uh, by clicking on the voting tally menu, you can see uh, how many voters have participated so far, what is the remaining time, and what is the current uh, state of the each project. Thank you very much. This was the voting flow. Any Hassan, questions? Uh... Okay, back to you, Ben. I don't think there is any questions. <laughs> well, the next section is actually an open floor uh, to allow uh... Uh, to allow Q and A, any questions? So um, yeah, might might just pause for another couple of seconds. Um, feel free to jump in, ask anything. Um, yeah, we we talk about next steps. Um, we're going to be online to help you with um, those questions that come up. But yeah, any anything people want to ask now with sort of an open floor or Q and A before we uh, before we move on. Okay, well, we'll keep uh, keep going. Um, so next steps. So, um, yeah, we we have um, right now a retro PGF channel open in Discord. Um, you can reach out to us there if there's questions around conflicts, if there's questions around timing. If you just want to get in touch with me or my dad or or anyone from the retro PGF team, um, feel free to use that Discord channel. Um, and we have created a voter guide, which essentially gives all of the information that we've given on this call, um, but sort of step-by-step -step instructions to go through everything as well. So last thing that needs to be added to that is this video recording for people that want to watch rather than read. Um, but yeah, each of our voters will receive that um, again in the next 48 hours. Um, so they have everything they need to uh to um, get voting once the submission, um, uh, once the voting window opens. Um, at that point, uh, yeah, voting opens on Monday. Um, it runs for just under two weeks. So it ends um, at close of day on Friday, the 21st of June. Um, and through that period, we will not only be, you know, very attentive in the Retro PGF channel, um, We'll be running the office hours that we've had on Wednesdays, also on Monday. Um, so you can get us on demand in the Discord channel, um, but we'll actually be online um, for you to just drop in if there's any questions um, on Mondays or Wednesdays. Um, and we can troubleshoot or, or discuss things or uh, give you whatever you need through that, um, through that open time.
and that's it for today um yeah thanks uh thanks for joining um maybe one last pause just to make sure you got everything that you needed as voters um any final questions or comments before we sign off yeah ben maybe maybe i'll just call out that um all of the foundation will be doing reviews on monday and so we do have those office hours and i really encourage people to come to those office hours and maybe even start doing some of their reviews with us um i think ben mm -hmm. you and i will probably be going through our list at that time correct we will yeah so people are welcome to come um yeah have an open working session we'll we'll be there so um yeah if you can make it we'd love to see you thanks zach cool well uh thank you um i see a few people on here that have made submissions so um yeah really appreciate the impact you're driving for the ecosystem um and thank you also for being the ones that figure out how we distribute these funds. Um, I think it's going to be really great to have, um, have everyone in the community thinking about how we drive impact and how we reward it. So um, really excited for that kicking off on Monday. Um, thanks for putting up with me at midnight my time. Uh, I'm going to go take a little nap. Um, see you all soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank great you, everybody. Job. Thank you. Take care. Great work. Bye-bye.